our feature game this morning. You see, the pictures don't match up, <laughs> but it is Vicky Persing and Chris Plies taking on the Burr squad, Regan and Todd. Need to get Schuster some more TV time. There, there you see Vicky Persing and Chris Plies. And their opponents, Regan and Todd Burr. Presence as always in this picture. Here are the games for this afternoon's first draw of the competition. Rebecca and Matt Hamilton against Kim Ryan. Jason Smith, Sheep B. Oh, lost those <laughs> There we are. We're good. Eileen Gabby John Schuster, Harley Rohrbach, Vincent Skebby. Cheat C, Claire Moore's Lance Wheeler. It's Fountain and Cot. And Sheep B, our feature matchup. Vicky Person and Chris Plies, Regan Burr, and Todd Burr. Marcus, we really appreciate the Kalamazoo Curling Club hosting the event for us. Talk a little bit about how this came together and how Kalamazoo ended up uh, being the host for this national championship. Well, thanks. We're glad to have you guys here. Uh, we've hosted three times before in the past at the Nationals, and uh, this fall, Dean called me up and said we really could use your help to see if you guys could host the mixed doubles they hadn't found a place for yet. You know, we've we've really enjoyed doing it in the past. It's always such a great thing for our members uh, to be able to bring some really great athletes here. So we said we'd be happy to do it. And I'm happy to be back here, Marcus. As you know, uh, I'm very uh, fond of Kalamazoo from past results here. I won my first two men's nationals, both in Kalamazoo. 2010 with the defense and uh, 2015, the uh, first with John Schuster. So a lot of good memories here. And I know this isn't the exact venue uh, with regard to uh, the ice surface where the championships being played. Is we're just next door to where the previous men's and women's nationals were held. But we did do some corporate events over here in the, uh, in the curling club itself. So a little bit familiar with the venue, but Always happy to be back here. Good vibes from the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, we're glad to have him back. John said the same thing. He had 15 and 19. He had his wins here. So, I mean, he's always fond of when we back here. I think in 2010 and 2015, we had birds here at the club. So, we got a lot of the best athletes. So, fond of them. It's great to be able to play some more. That's fun watching the athletes too in uh, in doubles events. I think for the the men's and women's players uh, coming so quickly after the uh, national playdowns in Denver, that it's a little more relaxed atmosphere here. Uh, not that doubles doesn't lead to a world in which there's a lot of uh, anticipation and pressure for trying to advance to the championship, but uh, always a little more of a relaxed. Uh, Crowd in here, and oh, you can see the players already. Matt Hamilton uh, looking across the sheets to see if all the four rocks that are set in the back of the fours are lined up correctly for all the rest of the games. Yeah, it is. It's great. So, first stone of the competition, Regan Burr with Team Burr throwing yellow stones. As you do with mixed doubles. None of the stones can be removed from the first shot, first five shots of each. See a wide berth being taken for these draws. We'll see if the rocks are in with that much. It looks like that's going sideways. Marcus, is this a, a normal amount of curl that you see here in the curling club, or is this USA Curling's ice makers getting the maximum amount of curl? Definitely the ice makers coming in and uh, getting some maximum curl. We, uh, we're seeing probably a foot and a half to two feet more than we normally get on our ice. Yeah, the handle was a little lazy on that throw, so it didn't curl a bit extra, but still that started out almost outside of the rings with the line. So we'll see if the Vicky Persinger goes out that wide as well. Looks like maybe middle of 12 foot for me, so a little bit less room than what the birds took. And I would expect to see a little more handle on Chris and Vicky Stones as well. Knowing what I know about having played against Todd Burr a bunch and having seen Regan play as well. Todd mentioned earlier today that uh, with his handle, his are going sideways at the end. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they adjust to that too, getting used to the ice, if they're just gonna still take more bro, if they're gonna put more rotation on the stones. But first stone from Vicky Persinger, perfectly thrown right to the top of the button. So control for Persinger implies right out of the gates. 
Martin with mixed doubles. The lead throws just the first stone and then the fifth stone of the end. Opposite player for each team throws the second, third, and fourth stones in the middle. You see again that slow handle from Todd Burr. And Rock going sideways across the top of the four foot. So pretty well placed stone by Todd. Looks like he may be sitting second count. But Marcus, I'll tell you something about getting used to in the booth. You probably know this from television too, that the overhead view does not always show exactly <laughs> which rocks are closer. So we try not right. to be wrong too much and not predict. So we can say for certain that Bersinger and Plies are sitting one, but no predictions unless you'd like to jump on that horse and see which is second already. I think we'll go along with your advice. <laughs> we'll wait until it all shakes out. You're a veteran already. Well done. <laughs> So reigning 2023 men's national champion, Chris Plies, throwing his first stone. Tina Schuster will be representing U.S. men. The World Championships, Ottawa, early April. Get to be up there for the first half of the tournament in my role as a World Curling Federation Athlete Commission member. Looking forward to that event. Marcus, anytime there's a, a Worlds in Canada, the players that are there, we're always really excited for that. Maybe not the uh, overseas destination trip that you might want, but for curling atmosphere, for the crowds and everything that goes along with it, uh, it's, it's always the most fun tournaments to play. Yeah, we're, uh, we've been fortunate. Uh, the Briar's been in London uh, a few years back, and it is again this coming up weekend. And we were fortunate to get up there, and it's amazing how many people they've been for their events up there. I'm sure, compared to what we've been able to generate down here in the States, it's just it's, it's amazing. Tens of thousands of fans. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a sight to see. Are you planning on going up at all for the Briar? Uh, you know, I would love to, Tyler, but I am heading out to Hawaii Thursday morning. That's an excellent choice still. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if the Briar was there, that would make sense. Right. No, you're taking Hawaii over just about any curling tournament. I think. Yes. Nice draw to the top of the fours. Todd. Looks like they got the ice down. Plies and person are sitting two here in the first end of this game. Chris with that backwards handle on his outturn release, Marcus, it always kind of throws you watching him slide out because it looks like he's throwing in the opposite direction. But I can assure you, it, it is an outturn, as you can see. Sure is. It's uh, it's unique to Chris. Pretty effective with it though, so yeah, that's a change it. That's a very good shot there. It's so much of mixed doubles, and we're gonna harp on this all competition long is rock position and staying above the teeth line. And you see a whole bunch of draws in the four foots, ups to reposition. But the number one thing is keeping that position at or above the T line so that you can protect those lines and that position for later in the end. You really don't see too many hits runbacks, things like that, unless a team needs to bail based on their positioning in this spot right now. Neither team is in dire straits in need of opening things up too much. So, And again, for the first five shots of each end, it doesn't matter if the rocks are yards or in the house. You cannot remove them from play. So that does create a lot of jumbled houses. But with only two rocks starting in play with the guard and the rock in the back of the field, five rocks thrown for each end. The game moves very quickly. Todd Burr throwing the out turn hit. This rock at the top of the four foot. Maybe they can move all four of those stones if they hit this in the right spot. It's up going right by and removing only their own stone. So maybe Marcus was seeing that even though it's curling a lot with draw weight, that's could be weight sensitive, maybe not curling as much uh, 
uh, when you throw hits as opposed to that huge swings and drops. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. Uh, that tends to happen sometimes. They get the uh, heavy rotation. Thought through that one pretty hard there. So probably stays straight in. So. And a lot of times in national competitions, too, as we see in warm ups and practice, the practice before the event starts, that it's curling more and ends up a little slower, too, than what you see in the actual competition. Now, we're seeing plenty of curling draws, but maybe when they were throwing hits in their practices, they were seeing a little more curl than that. That wouldn't be unusual at all for that adjustment to have to be made from the practice to the game starting. Okay, yeah. That probably what's happened to Todd. Right? We like to give those outs to the yes, players too. Always. Yes, always. But that is a very common thing to see. So Chris ends up a little yeah. bit deep with that tap. We're sitting at least two, yeah. I think we can safely say. That third counter is very close. Looks like two, yeah. Very important shot now for Team Burr. I like when they both have the same last name. You can just say Team Burr. With doubles, <laughs> you never know which name you're using you kind of have to say both of these yes it does so we appreciate todd and Rudy playing together so we can just say one name the burrs yeah Burr. yeah we had todd and regan they came into town a couple of years back and kevin martin to raise some money for the regan foundation uh, wonderful people and a joy to have you know, the, the, the kevin martin academy it was, it was a wonderful time yeah todd and regan uh, done so much for the Lucas Foundation with the Lucas Spiels, the multiple ones that they hold throughout the year. There's the, the one big one that's always uh, late spring, early summer, but uh, the, the amount of work that they put in for that foundation, and we're even as tireless in everything that she does. Uh, anything that we can do to help out with those, and a really fun tournament to play in besides on that charity Spiels circuit. I haven't made it to that one yet, and I definitely want to. She is, she is a bundle of energy, and you just <laughs> want to help in any way you can. So Team Burr's final stone of this first end, looking at at least two, possibly three. And setting up with the intern, so I believe they're going to be playing a double tap on their own yellow stones. Probably just trying to get second count, not playing this with too much weight. More rotation on that one for Reed. Todd sweeping hard now that Starting to take a turn, but a hard turn too. Mine looks pretty close. That's a good shot from Regan. Cut the one. Yeah, they, I think they wanted to play it to maybe a tap freeze. As now you see, Vicky Persinger does have an out turn slash for possible four if they catch this thing again. But even if they just pick the yellow out and roll out, it does look like it'll be three. Yeah, it does. Shots. Marcus, this is one of those shots that when you look at it from up close, it looks a lot thicker than it is. It's, it's hard to hit it too thin with those shots like this. Right. That's the benefit you guys have, all the angles over the years. You guys have that. A lot better than us club girls. Yeah, we better. <laughs> All right. A lot of repetition. <laughs> yep. Final stone of this first end. Vicky Persinger out turn slash. Flies on this one hard. Looks like his over curl is ready. So a bit of a break there for the Burrs as that tap from Regan gets very well played. Does force Persinger flies to one point. After one end of play, first group is leading the birds one zero.
Back for the second end of our featured draw, the opening draw of the 2023 Mixed Doubles National Championships in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Start of the second end. We will recognize this from, from Denver. It's time to talk about Warm Room Hero. It's your curling club website, clunky and unworkable. Are you tired of your club relying on social media? Because your website just does not work for your members. Finally, the curling management software your club has been waiting for is here. Check out warmerupgirocurling.club today. Happy to have them on board once again. Let's see, first stone of the end this time around from Team Persinger Implies. We're scoring that one in the first, and the ball goes right to the button. second end and then Regan's tap in that first end. Oh so important. Forcing Team Persinger and Plies to make a difficult shot for multiple points. Resulting in just a force. Marcus and you say in the first games of competitions, whether it's mixed doubles, whether it's men's, women's, anything like that. The first game, especially with a long round robin, is kind of a throwaway game. You want to get the win if you can, but just kind of getting used to the conditions. You're trying to get comfortable. So if you can get a win, it's like a bonus win, but you put less importance on the win loss in the first game than you do in any other game. In the Makes sense. Each arena is going to be a little different. I know Sean and the guys are always trying to make it as consistent as they can. Each building has its different nuances, and they come in, and trust me, I know from our arena, different challenges every time they come in. So they do a great job. Yeah, you can see that. Getting to the ice is the most important thing first game out. Really well played. Out turn freeze with a little bump from Regan there, too. A couple nice shots early from Regan. And again, that position in the top of the forefoot. We're going to be a broken record this week in talking about that, but that is the, the name of the game with mixed doubles. A lot of draws and bumps to the forefoot, but that position above the tee line, so important in controlling the end and taking it away from your opponent. Chris Plies is second of the end, really curling hard off of the wall side. We'll see if that ends up being consistent throughout the week as well, but that turned absolutely sideways. Is that something you see, Marcus, during league play here at the curling club, that coming off of the, the walls on the end sheets that you, you get more curl in those spots? We do on that outside wall. This inside wall on the other side of the arena, not as much because there's it's not as close to the outer elements. But, yeah, the, out, the outside wall they're on right now is, is the other side's outside, so it does tend to impact it. That's good insider info. Well, right. They should have asked you about that before the tournament. You'd be the first one I would have gone to if I was the players. Did any of the players approach you before the tournament asking about what they normally see in the ice out here? Uh, no. Uh, they they asked me just – or they just got a comment for that, how much curl they were getting during practice, and we're excited. Todd, you know, his, his, his level of turn on his is going to cause some problems, he thought, maybe. Others said they're really excited because the amount of curl really is a strength of their game, and that's the ones that have been competing on this kind of ice – their whole lives and they like this style and as you say that todd makes a really nice bump and that's exactly what we're talking about marcus with that rock positioning tapping that rock to the back of the 12 foot couldn't take it out yet either because of the mixed doubles rules so perfect weight to keep that in play but rolling so the angles are literally lined up well for team burr right now with those rocks above the t-line straight to that rock in the back of the forest for team flies and person yeah, they're sitting good right now Plies playing the intern, possibly looking to tap that rock on the button, but at least trying to get to a freeze. And we'll see if this turns over as hard as his last did, really curling again. And this is that's a considerable walking. amount more curl than we saw in Denver as well at any point. That's 
nice really shot. getting these to walk down. But that's a good thing for a mixed doubles tournament because so much of the game is predicated on drawing to the forefoot and playing to the center of the sheet with soft weight. You really want a lot of curl because that's going to give more opportunities to make the shots that mean the most in this particular type of game. So it's great to see early on that they're getting this much curl, even if it's a lot. The last thing you want with mixed doubles is straighter ice because then the the shots that you would normally see, they're a lot more difficult to make. So that should play into more shot making and positioning for this game. Yeah, a couple of the athletes did say that to me. They said they're very excited simply because you can make any shot out here with, with the curling this much. So they're looking forward to a lot of action and a lot of point scoring. And if the, the curl does appear that it's weight sensitive, that plays into ice reading more too, which is good. We like seeing that. And for the players that like to play that run back, because you, you really don't see too many uh, board weight, normal weight hits on this ice uh, when you're trying to bail, especially, but that run back on that center stone is the one you see a lot as we see in two other sheets, as we're talking about it, right. that, that peel weight shot is so important in the center of the sheet. And if it's not curling with up weight, then you can still put the broom where you want to, uh, where you want to hit the stone. That one ends up again, maybe a little weight sensitive, even though that's the spot that we saw Chris's rock curl so hard. Todd throws a little bit more weight, just enough to yeah, go through the house. And that rock really didn't take the same amount of curl at all. So no, Marcus, I think we're really seeing early on that this is going to be weight sensitive conditions. And like you said, the top level curlers here, they, they pick up on that quick. They make their adjustments for it. And can take advantage of that. And the pace of these games too, is as a commentator, I have to readjust from, uh, what we were doing in Denver, where you feel like you're filling more downtime and uh, sure. you're talking more about what shots they may be playing coming up with doubles. It moves so much more quickly based on the number of shots in the end and the amount of time that they have to play the end. So it you sure really have to stay on the ball. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Before you know it, you're close to the end of the end and it doesn't take long. And this one again with that through the house weight not curling as much as they thought so the amount of broom that you need to take for through the house compared to just draw weight looks to be a pretty marked difference a foot difference easy yeah and here's where you see ice reading come into play again too that i mean if we're seeing this up in the booth now pretty quickly in the first couple ends of the game the players should be seeing the same thing and making those adjustments so I would hope that you don't see as many of those types of misses where you see the rock not curling as much with those weights, the through the house, the hack weight, the board weight shots as they make that adjustment too. Todd Burr's final stone of second end. One more to play for Team Burr with Regan having the last stone. This one looks like it's taking that hard curl again with closer to tap weight. Just over curls a little bit and ends up wrecking on their own in the top of the eight foot. Persinger implies looking for a way to prevent team Burr from tapping that yellow stone right in front of the red, I believe. They've got an angle either way, it looks like, so it's tough to guard them both. Yeah, their main concern right now is making sure that they can't remove both of those stones. Right. So if they, even if they made the outturn side with the tap, it'd be awfully difficult to remove the rock in the back of the forefoot. Now, that one's not that much of a concern for scoring, but for setting up the big end, it's going to take them two shots probably to remove both of those. So this looks like either a freeze or a guard on that side. And another thing with doubles that takes some getting used to is with no skip at the other end, you're kind of guessing a little bit on what they're actually playing. Yeah, it's hard to know exactly until it's been thrown. So they are playing the, the little freeze tap and 
Now this is getting a little bit dicey for teams. Yes, it is. Here implies. I think that tap went a little too far back. Might have left the possibility of getting those two red ones out. Yeah, that slash could lose both of those to get them out of the forefoot right now with the angle they're playing it in at. Yeah. You don't have to have them both go out. You just need to get them out of the forefoot. So if I'm Team Burr, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I could get the big end here with the little slash, and it doesn't have to be a bomb with Wade either. It just has to hit the right spot and get that stone out of the forefoot. So big shot early in the game for Regan Burr. Catches this in the exact right spot. This could be a shot for as much as four, four. I believe. That's what it's looking like. Only has to move both of those stones a little bit of distance to get them out of the forefoot. Regan made a great soft shot in the first. The whole person replies to a single point. Now looking for one with up weight. For a possible big end. Here is this final stone of the second from Regan Burr. A little sideways action there, a little artistry. The line is close. It's hanging a little the girl just a little bit. Just a bit. Oh my. Oh, that's perfectly done. Great shot from Regan. Great That'll shot. be four for Team Burr here in the second end. Great shot. And that will leave the score after two ends. Burr and Burr, four. Person replies, one. Beginning of the third end, this opening draw of the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. Tyler George and Marcus Gleaton in the booth. Big shot by Regan Burr to finish that second end for four points, that angle raise out turn. They now lead 4-1. And Marcus, we did comment on the, the delivery there from Regan. And, and this I mean this as a compliment coming from an artist like myself. You know, that doesn't matter how you get there but just make the shot. And you saw Regan had a little bit of a wobble and a, a pretty good fishtail there, but makes a perfectly executed shot in the end. And, and we know as, as curlers that, <laughs> you know, every delivery is a snowflake. Everyone's different. And right. uh, you just got to get the job done. And Regan did it absolutely perfectly there. So she did took advantage of that tap that they threw kind of just went a little too far in the back and gave him a chance for, to get both those red ones out for a big end. So again, starting out very wide with that intern draw. Going to need a lot of finish to get to that stone in the back of the forefoot. But, Marcus, that's the correct way to play these types of shots, too, especially for, for Regan, knowing that she doesn't throw as much rotation, that the last thing you want to do is soft it on the inside of the line. You can always get it to curl more. You can always walk it down that line, as we say. But the last thing you want is to take – a broom that doesn't allow you to make the shot because with this much curl and that much rotation, once it's gone, it's gone. And sweeping isn't going to do much anything for the line. We're already seeing that when it starts to take its turn, it's it's too late. So yeah, you got to stay out wide. And so much of the, the ice reading with ice that curls this much too. And with it being that weight sensitive is anticipating the curl because 
with that much curl on these draws and with the majority of shots and mixed doubles being these bumps and draws and soft shots to the center, you have to know when it's going to start curling because you're not doing a whole lot to hold the line when it's curling that hard. It's just going that hard. So if you can get it before it takes a curl, if you think the line is tight, that's going to have the most effect. So the earlier you can get the sweep, the better it is to actually control the line on these shots. Yeah, and it's a little more difficult here with mixed doubles too, simply because you know, every team does a little different, but you don't have two sweepers. You're not on it instantly. It's it's everybody's got a different way of making sure they get that, keep that rock out there. Todd Burr throwing his first stone of the third end. Scoreboard says 1-0 on your left, but I assure you it is 4-1. Team Burr is in the lead. Nice tap again by Todd. A little behind the tee line, but still sitting two points as of now. We do have power plays that are also used in mixed doubles. And it's always interesting to see when teams elect to use them. Sometimes it ends up being a momentum play where you'd see it early in the game if somebody scores a big end as Team Burr did there. But usually teams elect to use them in the second half of the game where the center guard that starts out is on the corner and that rock that's in the back of the forefoot that starts out the end is behind that corner guard. Each team has one of those per game. And again, we play eight ends as opposed to the 10 that you'd see in men's and women's. Good yeah, it's an important there. tool. It's an important tool to try and get yourself back into the game. Sometimes it's used defensively, even if you're up and haven't used it yet. Teams will tend to do that to keep the rocks out of the forefoot. Another interesting thing with mixed doubles too, Marcus, is if you see a 4-1 score after two <laughs> ends in a men's or women's game, you think, okay, one team's off to a really good start. It's going to be a tough rally with the opponent able to play more defensively. That's not the case with mixed doubles. Every single end is a battle awesome. offensively. Playing defense, really the only way to do that with mixed doubles is continuing to play offense because you can't remove any stones from play for the first five thrown stones of the end. It, yes, it is certainly an offensive game. and Four-point, three-point leads are uh, very easy to come back from in this game versus the four-person game. So I should say first five stones in play for the end. So everything fair game at this point. If Team Plies wants to open things up. So now I'm looking at the scoreboard and saying Team Plies because it's the last name on there. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a way to shorten it up. Maybe that's just what we'll go with for the week, whichever name is last, as opposed to saying both teams' names the entire Each time. Each time, correct. I got to save my voice as much as possible. That'll that'll accumulate throughout yeah. the week. Uh, you, you did uh, men's and women's nationals. That was a lot of draws, and you're back here. <laughs> Shorter Seven. games is a good thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Flies playing the intern tap. Trying to get around that rock in the top of the forefoot and get to the rock in the side of the fours. Person who sweeps it the whole way and ends up ticking that rock and rolling open. So a pocket now available for Team Burr to draw into, and I think they will. We will have player mics available throughout the competition you do not for this first game so whatever you can hear on the ambient mics is what we're getting as well and that'll help for us commentators too so they're talking more about the, the shots that they're playing and trying not to just read it based on where the rocks are set up and what turn it looks like they're throwing when they get in the hack i can tell you that from doing doubles uh, in the olympics as as somebody who doesn't speak all the languages of the rest of the teams that we're playing all the time, that 
regardless of where they set up without having to skip in the house, there were times when you'd say, they're, oh, they're playing the, it looks like maybe the intern tap, and then they come flying out for the outturn hit on the opposite <laughs> side. Right. So those mics were very helpful when, when I could understand <laughs> what the teams right. were saying. Oh. Really well-played shot there by Great. Todd Burr in that position. Once again, Marcus, those two rocks above the tee line with backing, very difficult for team Persinger implies to remove. Yeah, it's going to take a couple shots at least. Or the run back. No, no, trying to get the edge. I think Chris thinks he can get two of these out at least. Yeah. Just trying to set themselves up for having a chance to score <laughs> on their last. It looks like he might be able to. The middle one's going to stay, and hopefully he's trying to get the outside one and the, the two outside rocks here. Chris playing the outturn peel weight shot, trying to catch maybe half a stone. It's a little thin Adam. here. Let's yeah. get a bunch of them moving, and that, that second yellow stone actually kicked up backwards. Sure did. To the wow, top of the fours, and they are shot, shot right there. A lot better shape. And closer to possibly making those other stones count now. Intern tap will be available for Regan Burr. Important thing, too, with this one, Marcus, is where you leave your shooter. Because if they make that tap, but it overcurls to the point where that red stone is open, even though it's their own stone. You may see Vicky Persinger play the in off off of that red stone to wherever this is frozen to. So you want to stay a little on the high side with this tap. Yep. Well, she made a real nice one last end and got a chance to help again. Yeah, Regan certainly been on her game early. Made a couple of great shots both with soft weight and that up weight slash in the second for the four. Yeah. So final stone for team Burr. This one looking like it's quite a ways out there. Sure is. Are they walking down now? See what they can get out of it. Look at that. That one's walking sideways there. That really turns over hard. Still looks like red may be sitting one. And there so is it looks a like red, yeah. Draw for two, the side of the button. But as, Marcus, as much as these <laughs> curl, you can see that even though it's over buried to the other side of the guard, it could curl enough to tap that tap yellow that one yellow. up for one. So really want to make sure you take enough room here and walk this sideways as much as possible. And this is coming off the wall side, so yes, curling hard both ways, but even more so off of that wall. She looking at that double. Yeah, Chris was just checking to see if there was something maybe for more than two somewhere, but I don't believe there is. I don't is. think there is. So Vicky Persinger trying to draw the side of the button for their second point here with the final stone of the third end. Line looks fairly close. It's all on the weight. Looks like the weight looks may be all there. Plies is sliding behind this one, not thinking it's going to slow down enough. Now just trying to make sure they don't touch their own stone. That is a little heavy from Vicky there. So ends up just being a single again for Persinger and Plies. And after three ends of play, Team Burr leading four to two and having Hammer in the fourth.
Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. The start of the fourth end here at the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. Burr and Burr leading Persinger implies four to two, and they will have Hammer here in the fourth. Tyler George here with Kalamazoo's own Marcus Gleaton. Marcus, I, I was thinking watching the, the start of this game that where we're seeing the break point in these shots with the draw to the fours and even back 12 back line through the house weight being a considerable amount of difference in curl. That's kind of something that we'd see with Blaine ice, like mm -hmm. in events that we played in the past. And as we know, Regan and Todd, that's their home club. So these sure. conditions kind of play into what they're used to seeing with maybe a little more curl than they normally get in Blaine. But I can remember playing in tour events in Blaine and that seemed to be the case all the time that the difference between top fours and back 12s, the amount of, broom that you took is actually pretty significant so maybe playing into the comfort zone for team bird it might it looks like it is so far they're they're really on it with all their draws and playing very well nice freeze from vicky persinger to start the fourth end regan burr's first playing the out turn either to the top of the button or to the freeze either way you see todd thinking this one's all there just watching needing it to curl bounces off a little bit on the t line i think you'll see plies try to play this one to the top of the fours even maybe tap that yellow one and roll in a little bit, but still trying to keep that position in the top of the forefoot. Outturn draw for Plies. Almost halfway through this game already too, Marcus. This is a... Fourth end breaks. Coming up soon. So, yeah, it's a kind of a change of pace from those men's and women's games. See, that one is going to the top of the forefoot. Persinger sweeps it all the way to the top of the button, crosses over to the opposite side a little bit. Burr and Burr, a little bit short on time, getting in the hack quickly to throw this one. Less than their, less than half of their starting amount of time already early in this fourth end. This one walking in sideways now, just playing to a freeze on that rock in the top of the fours. Bumps a little bit. Interesting to see if Chris thinks they can. Play this to maybe squeak that yellow one between that's the two what i was reds. looking at it's close <laughs> it's the kind of one that you, it lines up and you want to play it just because it's fun right you, you want to stay away from that trying to win games right if yeah. it's not the right shot but for those of us in the booth too we like seeing those makes it more fun for sure i, I think chris will probably end up just tapping these around but making the smarter play but you did see where Chris set up to throw that, Marcus. That's a lot less broom than what they were taking earlier in the game for these tap-type shots. 
and still running a lot straighter on that line. Now turning over. And that's Pretty the side good. away from the wall, so it's coming into the wall. So yeah, a little less. Well, that's really well done. Pushes it right into that pocket. So, yeah, it, I don't know if he could have made it with hit weight to get to the line that they needed to to push it to that hole, but but the angle's setting up pretty well. And there is a, a freeze into that pocket once again for Team Burr, but now that rock in the top of the forefoot, very important for Persinger implies that they can use that stone. Jason Smith's voice you hear on the ambient mics, one of the louder players out here this week. The four games going, and sometimes five throughout every, or just, it'll always be four, I suppose, with the two pools of eight, but with four games going, it is important to be loud enough for your one teammate to hear. Yeah, it can get loud out there very quick. That one ends up a little bit heavy and wide for Burr. Persinger implies with control of this forefoot. Likely Chris will try to throw another one right to the top of the button underneath that guard. They got a chance for a good end here. Big shot. As we talked about, the doesn't really matter if you have hammer or not with mixed doubles and Continuing to attack with draws and bumps as that is your best defense. Flies playing the out turn draw. Should see a big jump right about this point here. There it goes. Really like to not bounce here. Does bounce a little bit, push that rock back, so a little bit heavy. <coughs> Still good position, though, on the top of the button. Flies the person here. I believe Todd will probably try to tap that stone back that's on the top of the button, create a wall of rocks behind their own. They'd like to score a multiple point end if they can, but first things first, making sure that they score here with a two point lead already in the fourth end of the game. Taking that hard turn again. Really like to move this back just a little bit. That's well played. Nice Tough shot. to get that stone out, but there is an in off, the in -off. for Persinger on that right side. And, and Marcus, if you've seen Vicki Persinger play at all, you know she's definitely got that shot in the bag, throws up weight as well as anybody, men's or women's, in the game. I remember uh, what the Olympic trials shot she made was unbelievable. A shot to go to the Olympics. That was, was an all-timer. Unbelievable. And, and showing what type of uh, player in person Vicky is, too, afterwards. When I, I asked her about it, congratulated her, you know, all she could say to start with was, I was so bad that game. I'm just so happy <laughs> I could make one big one after yeah. everything else that happened in that game. And that's... That's the market champions that they make the ones that matter at the end of games. And, and she did. Was not happy with her game up to that point, but made one of the greatest shots you'll ever see in a situation of that magnitude with the Olympics on the line. Just a fantastic yes, it shot. Was, it was. Yes, it was. Did they decide that's what they're going for? She's going for the in off here then? We're going to find out pretty shortly. I'd, right. be, I'd be awfully surprised if they weren't playing that shot. It lines up really well for him. It does. He said three or four after it. And just playing something More soft. Draw. So possibly just with them already sitting two, I guess they, they felt like this is a safer play. Sure. 
That makes sense. Maybe we're getting a little over aggressive here in the booth. <laughs> I just like seeing Vicky throw those, I think. <laughs> it's easy to make it from up here, too. Yeah, and they're trying to guard, but this is over curling already. And, and that's something that we'll keep an eye on throughout, too, is that when placing guards, they're really going to turn over hard. So you, you really can't take too much broom. That you can always sweep to finish, but it's going to start curling so early with that type of weight that there's not, and you saw with, with Chris just walking with it, there really wasn't yes. anything he could do with it. So the sweepers will have a huge impact when you take a wide broom and sweep it to finish on this big curl. But if it's inside that line, you can sweep it right out of hand, but once it starts going, there's, there's nothing you can do. So this final stone for Regan Burr will be a draw or tap for a single point. Nothing else available. Regan really taking her time to set this one up. They're going to have to play pretty quickly in the second half of this game, Marcus, with Yes, Less than are. nine minutes left to play four ends already. So final stone of the first half of this game. Regan Burr playing, we believe is just a draw through that hole, but it's like plenty of weight and really needs to curl now. Trying to curl. Sweeping for the tick. Don't Ooh. think it made it far enough. So, again, weight sensitive on that shot. Ends up being a steal of two, for Persinger implies. At the break, we will be tied 4-4. And with the fourth end break, it's brought to you by Warm Room Hero, the intuitive curling club software that takes the stress out of schedules, registrations, and more. Warm Room Hero, a platform built for curlers by curlers. Check out Warm Room Hero at curling.club today. And again at the break, after that steal of two, score stands. Team Burr four, Persinger implies four. Let's say you're in high school and there's a sport you like. But sometimes you think, you know, it might be cool to try a new sport. Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO.
back for the second half of the opening draw 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. After steal a two in the fourth end, Persinger implies now tied with Team Burr 4 4. Tyler George here in the booth with Marcus Gleaton of the Kalamazoo Curling Club. And Marcus, again, we're very thankful that the club stepped up to host the event. I've uh, already spoken about how partial I am to Kalamazoo and but love the area as well. And uh, the, the club members have been so uh, integral in putting these events on in the past. Talk a little bit about the uh, the Kalamazoo Curling Club, how long you guys have been around and what membership's looking like right now. Sure, yeah, we, we founded the club back in 2008 and uh, we were in Arena Ice for a long time. And in 2015, we finally worked with Wings and we're able to get dedicated ice. We take care of our club's ice all on our own. So it gives us the ability to have some really nice ice. Ever since then, it's allowed us to really expand our membership. We're up to about 150 members, kind of back to where we were pre-COVID, which I think most clubs are hoping. And fill those spots are excited to be a part of, of USA Curling, quite frankly. That's what it allows us to do. And if someone's interested in coming out to check out the arena or set up an event, uh, how can they contact you guys? Where can they go? Uh, KalamazooCurlingClub.com. We do corporate events. We do. We have some Learn to Curl set up for uh, in March, uh, as well as leagues. Uh, our season's coming to an end here shortly after this event, but uh, we'll start right back up next September. We'd love to get a lot more people to come on out and try this awesome sport that we all love so much. And Marcus, you did say that the, the membership is rebounded now from the, the height of COVID that you're back up to the numbers that you saw uh, with the momentum, I, I'd like to say, coming off of the 2018 games too, as I saw in all the traveling I've been doing. So the expectation I would say maybe is that for that to continue going forward the it is continue growing it really is yeah 2018 uh, tyler as you're well aware and you traveled all over as a wonderful ambassador for the game uh and, and made your time here too in 19 you were here we loved having you it was just The, the momentum that we had from those games in 2018 really hadn't slowed until COVID, COVID. came around in March of 2020. I can tell you from my own uh, travels for promotional events that I was every bit as busy in early 2020 as I was in early 2019. So that type of carryover from the games, hopefully we can get that momentum going again now that things have opened up to the point where people are coming. Wide draw again, in turn, trying to walk down to the rock in the back of the, the button. It's up just on the back side of the T-line. Perfect weight, just need to curl a little bit more. Lies likely to follow that. I always pause with my call on what they're likely to do until I see the kick out of back. Especially with Chris, because with his with his grip on the stone and with his setup, you don't know until he slides out which turn he's throwing. So right. I thought that they'd play the same turn, but yeah, was... I'd rather wait and know for sure. This one over curling, coming to the opposite side, out from underneath the guard, and maybe a little deep as well. So Chris won't be real happy with that one. Chris's have had a number of them and have really curled hard. At the end, they're just kind of finishing and walking sideways. So now that opportunity for Team Burr to take that position in the top of the forefoot. 
And as much as anything else, Marcus, with those types of shots, it's every bit as much about not having your opponent be able to take that position as opposed to having it yourself. And it's, you see that one ends up coming behind the T line as well. But as long as you're in that spot, your opponent can't be. And that's the the biggest thing, especially for the team without the hammer for, for Persinger and Plies there. They want to have that spot because if the team with hammer, if if Team Burr is in the top of the fours or the top of the button, it sets up a multiple point end. The team without the hammer has that position. You're setting up a steal. That's what creates such an offen offensive game. You just have to keep going at it. You can't, can't let up, can't let them ever have that position. I think we've only seen maybe two or three straight hits played in this game so far. We're already in the second half of the game. This will be the fourth one here from Chris Plies. Trying to play the in-off. Needing it to curl to get the roll in. Those roll to the button and all the way across to a corner freeze. That's nice a great shot. shot in their position now without hammer. 4-4 four, four game to, to have that position stay away from the big end. And we did see a pretty good finish on that rock too. So even though it's weight sensitive in the last maybe 50 feet, that rock did turn over. He got just enough curl there to get the roll over, end up in a real good spot. Todd now playing the out turn draw, trying to get to the face of that red stone. Again, with a few feet extra weight, not curling quite as much. Early impression too, Marcus, from watching Chris's hit and roll across and from even a bump like Todd just threw, the striking bands look really live. The rocks are kicking off really hard. So even just a slight touch is still getting a pretty significant roll off those stones. Yeah, they bring in the US rocks and they are fun to watch for us as club members to see how much action there really is on these. And obviously the ice surface is playing into that as well. So. Yeah, the combination of fast ice and live striking bands, it makes those uh, soft weight shots, uh, it gives you even more margin for error if you're trying to move them around, but less margin for error if you're trying to throw to a very specific spot because it may kick off harder. Lies with the outturn draw and a freeze on their own stone. They like to stay either nose or high side Looks like it's crossing just a touch. Rock is locked on there pretty good. There may be an in-off opportunity for, for Burr. playing off of their own stone and the side of the forefoot, I believe, is Todd's signal. Out turn in off. Todd Burr. Looks like it's a little on the wide side. Ends up just losing a bunch of their own. Very good setup now for Bursinger and Flies. Yeah. That Just as you'd said. Where you need to be on the on one side no matter what and ended up being on the opposite side. Yeah. We see another hit. It's two and two in the one end. We had seen two through the first four. So we're starting to throw a little more heat on these. Great opportunity now for Bursinger and Plies to Probably lob another stone in. There is no in-off now for, for Team Burr. I would expect to see Vicky throw another one right to the face of their own stone. This definitely looks like it's got a long ways to curl right now. It's starting. 
Walking down now, let's see how far Plies can take this one. Vicky jumping in too. Needs to go for weights as well. Ends up coming up short, so a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Sit a third counter. Not sure if Team Burr can score here. They also actually very difficult to give up less than two from where the rocks are lined up. Pointing at the side of the, the one foot button. It's not a one foot anymore. It's bigger than that. <laughs> yes. Went into old school terminology for a bit, but if they can maybe nestle one into the side. The pin is available. But there's a oh. very small point. Tough to, to get there, this. yes. Extremely difficult draw now for, for Regan Burr. Outturn draw to the side of the button. See if she can somehow find a way in for a single. We're not sure if it's there or not, but this will be the final stone of the fifth. Like plenty of weight right now. And Todd not following anywhere near this one. So it appears as though it will be a steal of two. Persinger implies coming all the way back from four, one down. Now, after five ends of play, will lead Team Burr 6 4 here in this opening draw. The everyday person may not aspire to be a professional athlete or an Olympic athlete you may just want to be the best person you can be. You just may want to sleep better. You may want to feel better. Thorn has many products that can support all of those things. So it's not just about performing or running faster or jumping higher. It's those little things that go into having a higher quality of life. Beginning of the sixth end, the opening draw of the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. Bersinger implies with a steal of two, now leading 6-4 over Team Burr. Start of the sixth, we'd like to thank our friends at Floor Curl. Thanks to them, USA Curling member clubs are entitled to a 20% discount on any Floor Curl inflatable rink set. These rinks only take a minute to inflate or deflate, are the perfect way to promote your club at summer festivals, events, or anywhere you have a flat surface. Power play to start this sixth end. Team Burr, see a well-executed tick shot into the house. Open that, that stone up for Persinger and Plies. That's very well done, Marcus, having that stone open and having their own as number one counter in the house. Yeah, I think that's the perfect way you're supposed to play that one. Good for them to help them kind of negate the power play here. Team Burr will try to replace that stone. Just like it to be in the same corner guard area where the previous one was. Mine's perfect, just gliding maybe a little bit deep. Still cannot be removed from play yet. as though Lies and Person will throw their stone 
Probably right to the top of the forefoot now. With no guards in play. As much as anything else, Marcus, you're just throwing it to this position because your opponent's going to have to remove it at some point. So you're making them waste a shot on a hit or a bump by throwing it to a scoring position, sitting two. Bersinger just guiding this one down into the forefoot. Just like it's going all the way to the back of the eights, which is still not a bad position, sitting two. That matters a lot more when there's a guard in play at this spot. With it wide open, being behind the tee, doesn't hurt you nearly as much. Right. Team Burr again playing relatively quickly. Five and a half minutes left on their clock as opposed to 8.28. Team Persinger implies we're ending up rolling out on that hit. This will give Plies the opportunity to play the double. Already sitting one, but with this lead, playing into the opponent's power play, just trying to keep this as clean as possible. So quick, easy decision for Chris and Vicky. You know, Chris loves these types of shots as well. For the intern double, the helpless feeling of watching without sweeping. Oh. Over curls just a touch. Looks like it may roll all the way out on the opposite side, too. So maybe a possible two point end set up now for Team Burke. We'll see if Todd elects to play the. The hit on that stone or the freeze. Like a freeze with that setup. It's like it's gliding pretty good right now. Starting to come down, but again, with the, the difference in weight there, Marcus, that's really run I, straight. I'm not there. sure if they were playing for the hack weight that it ended up being, or if that was just supposed to be a, a freeze or a tap, but it's nowhere near the line they needed to with it curling that much less. So a quick setup again from Plies. They'll be hitting that open stone. What I can say with a considerable amount of confidence that they'll be playing. <laughs> yep. This one's pretty easy for him to decide on. Electing to have Vicky sweep this time. He's trying to stick around in the house. Good He's shot. In a good spot. So hard to draw it up. Better if your person or implies facing the opponent's power play. No yellow stones in play and sitting two. Coming to the final few stones of the end. Vicky's first shot really kind of set the tone there. She made it perfect and enabled them to really kind of control the end. Yeah, it's an interesting aspect of the mixed doubles game that that first shot of the end, regardless of if it's a power play or just a standard end, has so much impact on what happens the rest of the end. It really does, yeah. In particular with the power play, being able to make that tick and taking that guard out of play you saw Team Burr having to replace the guard as opposed to being able to attack and throw into the house in a different way. Mm -hmm. That freeze over curls from, from Burr. So now Bersinger will have open hit on that stone to sit three. I think a nose hit here, Marcus, would probably be ideal. Well, it's depending on what they want Regan to throw. If you roll in front of your own, she may throw the draw with backing. If you hit and stick, now you're throwing without 
nearly as much backing if they decide to throw the draw. So I think dead on the nose is the ideal spot here. Looks like that's what she's going for. That really took off there, though. He'll make the mm -hmm. hit, but rolls out. Still number one mission accomplished for Vicki Persinger. Regan will have a likely draw with backing to the rock in the back of the forefoot. Definitely a shot where you have to be careful about throwing for backing, though, especially with how weight sensitive this is. You'd have to be careful of that under normal circumstances, but with the, the difference between T weight and back house weight with how much it curls, if you put down the broom for the draw and throw the weight for the backing, it'll go right by. Yes, that's what we're definitely finding out today already. A little artistry from Regan again there. Last time that happened, she made a perfect shot. We'll see what ends up happening here. This looks like it's coasting too, and Todd again, nowhere near the sweep. Really needs to turn over to get to that backing. It's trying now, but it's trying again, taking the the broom for oh. the clean draw and then throwing the weight for the backing does not get there. So another steal of two for Persinger implies. And after trailing 4-1, now with three straight steals of two, leading Burr and Burr 8-4 to four after six ends. Just because you're not a professional athlete doesn't mean that you should accept less. The beauty about what Thorne does is our product quality is the same whether they're in the athletic line or whether they're just for the everyday person. Thorne has kept true to never compromising on quality, never compromising on efficacy, never compromising on safety for not only athletes, but for everyone who would use their products. Beginning of the seventh end, opening draw of the 2023 USA Curling Mixed Doubles National Championships. 8-4, Persinger implies, leading Burr and Burr. The start of the seventh end means it's time to tell you that Warm Room Hero is more than just software. It's run by curlers, dedicated to building long-term relationships with your club. Warm Room Hero provides continuous support to ensure your website exceeds your members' expectations. Check out Warm Room Hero today at curling.club for special event pricing. Thanks to Anthony Darko out of the Windy City Curling Club. Again, sponsoring the events. I hear a lot from them throughout the course of this competition. Tyler George here with Marcus Gleaton of the Kalamazoo Curling Club. Marcus, we saw quite the swing here from... The start of the game, 4-1, Team Burr after two ends, and after a force of one in the third, it's been three consecutive steals of two. We now have a 8-4 game, and looking around at the other sheets, we have uh, sheet A, Hamilton Hamilton, leading Ryman Smith, 7-3, a final on sheet B, Geving and Schuster, 10, Rohrbacher and Chevy, 2, and sheet D, I suppose it's C. I'm counting the empty sheet here. Just looking <laughs> right. Across it. We'll I was going to give you that screen. local advice. Yeah, we're going to read it off the we're screen. We're not counting it. Using the eyeballs. Fountain and Cott leading 3-2 over Moores and Wheeler on sheet C. Working out the kinks in the booth here too. Game one. We'll get there. So power play being used that last end by 
Burr and Burr and ended up being a steal of two. Things not going according to plan for them there. And Plies and Persing are electing not to use theirs early in the game. Well, that momentum swing didn't end up hurting them the least bit. <laughs> right. It was a good strategy not to use it. Apparently, yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's been the, the general rule of thumb that, that I've heard from coaches and players in the mixed doubles game is that you rarely see that power play used before the second half of the game unless right. you really need a momentum swing. And no problem at all for, for Ricky and Chris and mounting a comeback without having to use the, the power play. And if things go their way in this end, you may see them not use it at all throughout the course of the game. bit of a pocket now on that intern side for flies to play into. I was told Marcus said uh, prior to the competition people that have been on site I have not been on the ice level as of yet but that the temperature out there is very cool. Not a bad thing for the players when you're moving quickly especially in the mixed doubles game. You do see Chris Plies with the stocking cap. Didn't see that at all in Denver throughout the competition for the men's. It's, uh, yeah, it's chilly down there. It is with, uh, with our club ice normally as well. Sean came in and um, kept it kind of at the lower temperatures to help with his ability to make the ice the way he wanted it. So, yeah, it's it's cool down there, but you know, the players get used to it pretty quick. And hopefully the fans do as they uh, settle in to watch. Flies well, ticks that rock in the top of the fours. Rolls over fully on the button with backing. Victory for them this end would be basically anything where they don't give up more than two. And they do have that power play in their back pocket in case they need it for the final end of the game. That's nice to have when you are up late in the game. It, you know, again, keeps all the comp all the rocks out of the center and cuts down on the ability for the other team to really have a chance to steal against you and helps you in that situation quite a bit. Todd playing the out turn in off, off of their own stone. Let's move the red one, but now fully locked onto that. Yellowstone would be very difficult to make that red one go away and try to make their own yellow count. Marks, I wouldn't be surprised here, and I'm going to try to make my first prediction without knowing <laughs> anything about what's going on on a shot like this. Uh, if they peel the guard and open this up now, Right. With the way the rocks are set up, the guard can really only hurt them with a four-point lead. I'd be pretty surprised if they did anything besides peel here. But it's not. <laughs> they are coming around. Oh, so for that's one. Why we, that's, that's why you, you, you got to go out on a limb a little bit. With sure. Shots. They are playing the draw. Not saying I wasn't right. <laughs> Correct. I played, but... There's many shots that can be called. Executing the one that's called is the best, the best option. Make whatever you're throwing. That's the biggest Correct. thing. Correct. Play a little oh, freeze into the pocket nice. there. and Both of those rocks with backing will be difficult to remove. So well played shot. But that, again, shows you, Marcus, how little teams play the scoreboard in mixed doubles as opposed to men's and women's, right. where instead... They're still just trying to take whatever position their opponent may have. Away, yeah. It's pound the forefoot and get in the right spots and always be on the offensive, really. So Burr playing the intern tap, 
trying to move their own stone that's on the top of the button back into that pocket of two reds. Looks like this is over curling. Really curling. Just barely touches their own and spins to the open side. It's a great setup maybe to put the clamps down on this game now for Persinger and Flies. With that stone crossing all the way to the open side, they can draw into that pocket, they can play it with bump weight, they can play it with just about whatever weight they want to try to get in between those two yellow and make it extremely difficult, if at all possible, for Team Burr to score this. Yeah, and like you said at the outset, really they needed two in this end here to make a push in the eighth. It's going to be tough. So the out turn draw by Persinger trying to get into that pocket. Mm -hmm. Doesn't quite curl enough to get there, so there is a tap score now for Team Burr. I believe there's anything available for more than one point. But they can chisel this. The pin is open. Try to stay alive in this game. Still would be down by three without hammer in the last end with mixed doubles, never know. So looking to secure their one point, extend this game until the last end. Burr. Now, first time we've really seen a draw going inside out to the wing too. That looks like it's going downhill sideways to bury underneath that corner. Great shot by Todd there. Now you see the importance, Marcus, of that draw on the first shot of the end by Persinger implies that rock in the eight foot is out counting the one that was thrown under the corner by Team Burr. So that has to be moved at some point to make anything they throw underneath the corner count. Two rocks to go. It's uh, yeah, they're, they're running out of stones. They got a chance. Flies throwing the hit on this rock on the button. Love to stick around. Really don't want to jam on their own. This is hanging out. Ticks it and just goes by. So. Again, teams getting used to how straight the hits are running compared to the draws and bumps. Definitely a surprising error there from Plies. So the door may be open now for Team Burr. Trying to throw this one under the corner as well, but need to go to get it there. Todd jumping in to help the sweep. Really need this to be on the paint. Does get into the house. Buries a good chunk underneath the corner too. Flies will have another go. I doubt they'll chase those rocks under the corner, Marcus, just because if they do hit the rock, on the button, they'll be sitting two. Burr will only have one stone left to play. They'd have to make have a to double, double and roll under the corner to have a significant chance of stealing three. So hit and stick, likely the shot here on the, the rock on the button for Plies. That will be the shot. Playing the intern this time. Like starting to turn over. Person you're trying to hold it on the rings. Will roll too far. So, at the very least, 
Team Burr with an opportunity to hit and stick and make Persinger implies have to make a hit on their final shot against the lost. Contact will all they'll need. Taking their time out just to try to set up Broom and figure out exactly where they want to put the stick for this. Regan has made some good shots on her last one here throughout the game. So she's got another one. She could force the issue here and make the flies of person here. Mickey throw her last shot. Not needing the hit and stick to make Vicky have to make contact on her last isn't really a roll. The only way that you could roll under that corner would be to throw this with peel and hit it just off nose, but very low percentage to try to get that roll. So see with that broom, this will just be a soft weight hit for Regan. Her final stone of this eighth end. Playing the intern. And they try to hold this so it sticks around. Looks like it's starting to curl hard. We'll roll all the way out. So that will be handshakes in this one. Person replies will not have to throw their last stone. The final score will end up Persinger implies eight. Burr and Burr five. Marcus, the opening draw, the team's trying to find the conditions, the speed, the curl, and we we saw some some definite, uh, I want to say, uh, tendencies with with the weight. The teams you know, running on the straight side or the deep side when they throw anything more than than draw weights. I will be interested to see if that's consistent throughout the competition. Yeah, it will. It definitely was uh, out there today, and, and I think the teams will adjust and figure that out. So we'll wrap things up for this opening draw. The second draw of the tournament will be 8 p.m. Eastern, our feature game tonight. It'll be Sarah Anderson and Andrew Stepera battling Sidney Mullaney and Chase Sinnott, all competitors in this year's men's and women's national championships in Denver from a couple of weeks ago so we will see you again for that broadcast this evening tyler george and marcus gleaton thanks for watching from kalamazoo